um, you know, often there are times where I want to chat with my dog, Tuffy, and um, my dog uh, passed over um, 18 years ago. Can you believe that? And I remember that that time vividly. Uh, it's like losing a child because that is what they are to us. They are our children and they depend on us and we depend on them just in a different way. Isn't that the case? And you know, um, the last fur baby I had, his name was Tuffy, and I loved that little guy. <laughs> he was like my little boy. I, I called him my little boy, my little boy Tuffy, and he was a Maltese poodle, and he was white. Uh, when he was born, when he was younger, he was a little bit more caramel colored, and then he went to straight white. I always remember him going to the door when he needed to go outside and use the bathroom, and he would just sit there and go, and you just growl at you like I need to go potty. <laughs> Love that little guy. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. So anytime I want to tap into where Tuffy is, I can do that. I know exactly where he is. I can see what he's up to. I, I can chat with him. So, you know, over the years, it was just so sad when I lost him. But now I recognize that, you know, we're always connected and I can tune in and chat with him anytime I want to. And he's just amazing. Um, and I, the connection's amazing. And I feel like I haven't really lost him. So that's the beautiful thing about the question it. Is, okay. Do our souls come back into animal bodies? So does your soul, if it wanted to, could it come back into a cat or a dog or a gorilla? Or a sloth. <laughs> I have a friend of mine. Well, you guys know Ashley. And um, her favorite animal is a sloth. She's like, I feel like it's my <laughs> my, my totem animal. <laughs> you know, I remember watching a uh, broadcast on YouTube. And uh, Ivan Teller, he does uh, trans channeling. And I was watching... I remember Ivan Teller channeling Bruce Lee and Bruce Lee was saying that he had come back into a female dog's body on earth and the dog was actually abused quite a bit through that lifetime. And when I was watching that, it resonated with me. I was like, yeah, it feels accurate. It feels right. Always see if something resonates with you or not. If it resonates with you, then you must be a vibrational match for that frequency, that energy, or what is being taught. So go in that direction if that's where you're at. Uh, but if it doesn't resonate with you, you get a tightness in your chest, you feel drained, you feel tired, you feel a tight pullback in your chest, you feel nauseous, you feel tightness in your stomach, don't, don't go there, okay? No matter what it is, it doesn't matter what it is. So uh, the, the question, uh, the answer to this question is yes, we do come back into other different uh, animals' bodies. And uh, the more information on that is um, our energy is just tweaked a little bit uh, in order to adjust into that uh, physical body. Okay. So it'll just be a little bit different, um, the amount that flows into the vessel is going to be different. The amount of your higher self that stays in the vessel 
consistently will be different. And um, they're just showing like tweaking on a dial, adjusting, making adjustments uh, that is needed for the level of consciousness that's needed for that vessel, whether it be uh, a higher percentage of energy or a, a lower percentage of energy. And um, your energy also, from what they're saying here, has to fit that vessel. So it has to be ready um, to come forth and incarnate into that vessel. Uh, and some souls are, are ready for that and some souls uh, aren't ready for that or more like, uh, are. This, what are you trying to say? They're just not interested in that even. Okay, so some souls are like, eh, I'm not interested in, in being a sloth or a gorilla. Okay. So the first um, pointer here is simplicity. Okay. It is, uh, it is energetically easier to communicate with animals as they exude a higher vibrational frequency. Um, overall, love filled and uh, eager to communicate with us too. So <clears throat> energetically, it's easier for us to communicate with our fur babies, whether in a physical vessel or otherwise. Uh, uh, when we are in a higher vibrational state or we are a higher vibration, okay? So that makes a lot of sense because, you know, the people that are not treating animals very well, they're not exactly interested in communicating with the animal, are they? They're not. They're interested in being more uh, discon disconnected, disjointed, uh, fragmented and doing things that are um, not okay. So that makes a lot of sense. So it's really important because your your animal, your fur baby is very high vibrational and it's, it's about simplicity and the ease and flow of communicating with them. You know, your animal isn't thinking about the future or the past or time or what it needs to get done. It's not thinking about any of those things. It has a very simple... Uh, consciousness and it's and most of the time it's in a uh, is in a moment of now it's always in the moment of now is I think when we look at humans <laughs> we're the ones that overcomplicate things overthink things have fragmented minds etc so if anything we should look at the animals as an example of w what direction to move in really okay Number two, um, it is us who need to learn from the animals to simplify okay, our lives, to rest more, to relax more, to let go, and to reach out and communicate with them. Okay. In a lot of ways, we get in our own way. But I don't think the animals really do that, do they? So in a lot of ways, uh, spirit is asking us to, you know, let go and move in the direction of simplicity and getting out of our own way so that we can more easily, more fluidly communicate with the animal's energy. 